Okay, so this is adding a name and a date to a cake topper. The cake topper was pre-purchased and we're going to customize it. So the key thing here is that obviously this is Star Wars themed, so we need to make sure that the font matches. There's a font that's available that you can get that's actually a free font and um, it's also uh, rated for commercial use. It's called Star Jedi. And that actually is really, really close to this. Um, there's a few out there, and uh, this one's as good as any of the others. You'll notice, though, that uh, they don't have an ampersand in this font. So since we want to make sure that it's readable, that's not really a, a symbol that anyone would want to get, we're going to switch that over to a nice fat font that'll kind of match the bold um, lettering here. So now that we have it done, uh, the question here is, uh, do we want to do placement on this where it's a small name over here on the side? You can see I've already got a guide here to show where the edge is on the text to make sure that it matches. And um, I did do a version like that. And I also did a version uh, where it was actually pulled down here and it was centered. And I think that one's the better one, honestly. So I'm going to center my text and I'm going to pull it back over. That's pretty well centered right there, and resize it so we can make sure that it fits the edges of what we're doing. That looks pretty good. So the next thing that we have to do is this obviously isn't going to stick if we add this to our cake topper. So we're going to go up to where the text overlaps the design, and you can see right there that we've got that that bit that it's covering. It's probably a little much because we want this to be readable, so we'll back it down just a little. Now the other concern is obviously that these lines are too far apart, so the date is actually kind of hanging in space. So what we'll do is we'll come over here and this is the tool where you can actually change the gap that's in between the lines of text, and we're going to reduce it until the text overlaps again because then when we unite, this will all connect. So you can see it looks really good. Uh, we're in a good position for the overlap and we've got overlap on our letters. So um, you might wanna go in like this A is a little uh, not, not overlapping as much. So we'll just current that in to make sure that we have that uh, looking good. And you can look at some of the others. I think uh, we might make this K come in a little bit too. So, get my cursor over there. Move that in. Everything else looks pretty good except this comma. The comma um, is going to want to come in and at least, if not touch the one, then it's at least going to be at this, this uh, stake that we've got that's going to be for the cake topper to actually push into the cake. So now we're going to come back a little bit and we can see that this kind of makes the the actual stake for the cake topper a bit short, so we're going to pull that away. So I'm going to lock this object real quick so I don't have to change it or anything. And uh, then I'm going to come over here and you can look at the top of this stake. Use my white arrow, so it's basically we're going to select the points that make the stake up. So we're going to come down here. And the easiest way to do this is I just control X to delete it. You can see we've got a gap here now. So I'm going to connect that with control J. And now we've got a solid right there. So we bring down the stake and we're just going to drag it down until it's below. Now, I really don't think that these curves are necessary now, the way that we're connecting to the text, so I'm going to pull those out again. So you just come over here and you want to select both of these anchor points and then delete. And we can select these two guys and drag this up, and this is going to extend our stake up into the numbers. And we're going to just join those as well with the J. So now, this all looks pretty good. We want to convert our type to outlines, so we're going to unlock the type again. And 
everyone's aware of this, we're basically going to unite. Everybody knows that. So you can see that looks really good. This stake is going to unite into it as well. And then we're going to select that with our big topper piece up here, and we're going to unite that as well. So now you've got one piece that's going through. And this is where we start getting into like little fiddly changes. So looking at the ampersand, this piece that's right here isn't really helping anything. And if you measure, this piece is probably pretty small. So you can see that's only 0 0.03. And that's basically, you know, you can get away with it. You can actually have something 0 0.03 cut, but was, is this gonna be helpful at all? And my opinion on this one is no. So I'm just gonna remove that because everyone can still read that that's an ampersand without it. And we're gonna come over here and you can see, unfortunately, that the two over here is hanging in space. So we're gonna make sure that that connects as well. Now, one way to cheat this is take your A arrow, the white arrow, and you can actually pull these down so that this letter is gonna meet up with it. So you just pull it down like that. Don't even worry about this point right here because we're actually gonna delete that. So I'm gonna come back over here, delete, and you can see that now we've lost that curve right there. So what we wanna do first is we're gonna add an anchor point to this. So we're, oops, that was on the wrong path. We're adding an anchor point so that we maintain our curve there when we delete the other point. There. So now we're gonna drag this point all the way back and join that. So if we zoom out, then you can see we're going to have a P that goes a little bit deeper, and then this two is going to connect. So we unite those. And it's just a matter of looking around and seeing you know, what looks good, what looks bad. This looks a little awkward over here because of the angle with the uh, number one. So I probably would just come in and grab that point and just bring it up so this is flat. So even though it's not technically uh, what the number one should be doing, it looks better just visually. So this is done. Um, I'll come out of outline mode so you can actually see it. Um, oops, there we go. There's the full thing. And this was then cut out of black acrylic. So I do actually have a picture of it here and it came out very nice. And you can see this is a little bit different. I'm actually doing it live. Uh, the text always, if you're depending on your kerning, depending on what you're doing, um, will change. So it's not gonna be exactly the same anytime I do a, a, a demonstration after the fact. But this should give you an idea of how you can go in and you can actually modify something that you've purchased so that you have it customized for your client. I hope that helped. Thanks so much.